massive. You could fit 75 football pitches in here. The 747 project would take 50,000 workers, over 75,000 engineering drawings and 6 million individual parts. A logistical nightmare. And Boeing planned to get the plane flying in just three years. Joe Sutter is the man who made it all happen. The chief designer, the daddy of the 747. He told me just how tough a job it was. It really was unknown territory. Nobody knew how to build a 350 to 400 passenger airplane. Well, there were a lot of skeptics. My wife, Nancy, she'd meet her friends, and the question was, does your husband know what he's doing? Is he crazy designing that big airplane? The major fight in designing the 747, meet all the requirements, but keep the weight under control. Overweight will kill an airplane. This investment was so big, we were spending Boeing money like it was going out of style. And uh, you get a program like that into trouble and the recovery is, you know, it's just suicide. When the 747 rolled out to meet the crowds, no one was prepared for what they saw. They expected big, but this thing was a colossus. It weighed in at nearly 200 tons, that's about the same as 30 buses, and that's without fuel or passengers. The doom mongers thought pilots would never manage to control the beast. Would the jumbo become a billion dollar white elephant? Boeing test pilot Jack Waddell was the first to discover if Joe Sutter and his team had got their sums right. In February 1969, just two months behind schedule, he became the first pilot to lift this leviathan off the ground. And boy, what a brown trousers moment that must have been. Here at Manston Airport in Kent, I'm gonna see how a group of 747 trainees cope with the same challenge today. We have 28 tons worth of landing gear. They're going to practice the most difficult part of flying this plane, landing it. Today when you're flying, you'll have the throttles almost closed and it will be racing along like a, a wild horse. I want one. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce. Sorry, I'm overdressed. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Alan Nicholson is in charge of the training. He's clocked up over 8,000 hours in the 7-4 and knows exactly what the learner pilots need to look out for. Gently with the power, otherwise it might take you by surprise. And now you can hear the noise, can't you? 80 knots. Passengers on board, we were hurtling. So, John, it's about, about to be your turn to go and land this. What's the biggest aeroplane that you, you've flown? What aeroplanes have you flown? I've been flying uh, the Metroliner and uh, the Learjet 35 is the, the, I mean, the most powerful aeroplane. But right. the, the Learjet weighs about 8,000 um, kilos. This weighed about fully loaded 370 tons right so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a wee bit bigger yes yeah are, are you a bit nervous yeah very because <laughs> when but i'm excited also i've been waiting for this my whole i don't know life i guess the 747's a massive step up from john's usual plane this cockpit carries as many people as his learjet i have every confidence in you that's good i'm not nervous at all you sure yeah <laughs> Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, here we go. This is John's first landing in a 747. He's doing a really great job. Five hundred. Bring the uh, nose up. That's it. That's looking good. 
a little bit more power. 400. A tiny bit slow. 300. This is the toughest bit for John. The cockpit is so high up and the landing gear so far back, it would be easy to think you've still got 100 feet to go when you suddenly bury the wheels into the runway. Can't bring the nose up 50, now. 40. Shut the throttles. Just hold the nose up 20. there. Nose up, nose up, nose up, nose yeah. up. That's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he did rather well. After the briefest of stays on...